Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker, author, and coach based out of Tampa, Florida. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. Before I introduce my guest, I'll share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. For today's episode, I will introduce the entrepreneurial journey of self-made billionaire Carlos Slim. Carlos held the world's richest person title from 2010 through 2013. As one of the world's richest men and Mexico's richest persons due to his numerous holdings in Mexican companies, the business magnate boasts an estimated net worth of $70.2 billion, according to Forbes. I found it interesting to learn that he began forming his business acumen at around 10 years old and attributes his success to his father. Each Sunday, Carlos's father would give him an allowance of five pesos and make him write down all of his childhood purchases in a savings book. Together, they would analyze the ledger and all the activities. As he followed his dad's financial advice, he began building his own wealth. Young, age 10, he opened his first checking account. Next, he soon withdrew money and began purchasing government savings bonds for 10 pesos. He did this because he wasn't earning enough return on his deposit. He was recognizing this at 10 years old. Age 12, he started buying shares of Banco Nacional de Mexico. And age 15, he is now a shareholder at that bank. And he kept investing through his years in high school and attended his first board meeting at a mining company when he was a teenager. Philip, what would you like best about that story? I really liked it. it was interesting. Thank you. I really liked that um, the man must have had quite some foresight at the age of 10 and then all the way through his teenage years. And uh, that's powerful. When I was a child or a teenager, I was just a child and a teenager. I grew up in a pretty protected kind of privileged um, manner. I did start at my entrepreneurial journey quite young. I was 18 or 19, I guess, and I'd, I'd always worked. Um, yeah, not to that extent. I didn't like start buying bonds at 16 or 14. <laughs> <laughs> that voice you just heard, that's the sound of today's guest. My guest on the show today is someone I met through the power of networking. Philip Hartman is a dad, podcaster, serial entrepreneur, board member of the Entrepreneurs Organization, beekeeper, tree hugger, and big wave surfer. Philip was born in Munich, Germany, but has been living in lovely Cape Town for the last 17 years together with his wife and children. Philip has five children, twins and triplets, and the mission for the, his podcast, Dedicated.com, is to empower other dads. He asks unique dads to share their own experiences with the aim of empowering other men in their vital roles as dads. He does this with the aim of facilitating family success. Philip believes with this, he can help make the world a better place. He's the founder and CEO of GSDH, which is a full-service digital creativity, creative agency, and also The Factory, a digital performance production house in Cape Town, South Africa. Both companies help clients in Europe and the U.S. optimize their digital marketing and digital production efforts. Allow me to please introduce Philip Hartman. Philip, thank you for coming on the show. You. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. Would you mind please introducing yourself a little further to our listeners and previewing your story without giving too much of your entrepreneurial journey away? Oh, I think you said the, the easy stuff already. Um, I'm 41. I'm an entrepreneur by heart. I think it's the only profession uh, I can be in. I think I'm probably also unemployable. I'm a very passionate father. Um, you said it already, twins and triplets actually within the span of 13 months. So I guess wow. that's uh, out of the ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting journey and, and it continues to be so. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to learn all about your entrepreneurial journey today, Philip. And what I do on each episode is we dive into the big five. 
Each interview, my guest and I go over these five questions to help you, the listeners, learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Are you ready to go? Sure. When did you realize that you either weren't happy with what you were doing or you just needed some kind of change to truly start this entrepreneurial journey? Please walk us through that story. Mm. So I, I've never been employed before I started uh, being an entrepreneur, um, other than the odd uh, job at school, you know, when I was at, at IT. I was actually, funny enough, my first job ever, I was a cheese cutter in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> but so I would, I guess, I, and then I worked on construction sites uh, before I was legally allowed to work so that I could make cash. Um, but I, actually that's, I guess, not employment. So I started being an entrepreneur at the age of uh, uh, 21 uh, with my friend, Stephen, who I'm still running the same uh, company with today, GSTH. And now you mentioned the factory. So we started the second one uh, in my parents' garage, actually. And the idea was always to... Yeah, to, facilitate, to, to allow for a degree of freedom, I guess, um, through our work. So I didn't really just go into any business just so because I was so passionate about the business. I was really passionate about uh, being able to, be, to design my own uh, life myself. And entrepreneurship allows this for me. What was the first business you started? Was that GSDH or was that something different? That was GSDH. And GSDH is a digital creative agency. And we um, service customers now in Cape Town. Uh, well, we are based in Cape Town and the customers are based in Germany and Switzerland predominantly or Europe on a larger scale, I guess. And it allows us to do arbitrage, obviously. So we have um, much lower costs in South Africa and uh, clients who are based in Germany and Switzerland can then benefit from that advantage that we in parts obviously uh, give to our clients. That's an incredible model, really capitalizing on things there. How big is your company? How many people do you have on there? Uh, we're just 15 people, but we're obviously in tech, so it's not really about headcount. Right, right. Well, that's inspiring. What would you say one or two of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur are for you, Philip? I think it can be very lonely sometimes. Um, so definitely, I would advise everybody who goes into being an entrepreneur to have a partner if you can because you have the highs together but also the lows together and i think it can be it can be quite overwhelming at times because the of the um, nagging uncertainty so as long as i can remember and as long as i've i've worked uh, there's always an element of uncertainty around cash and i think it's very important to learn that you can actually disassociate your feelings from cash and such issues um, if you understand that you can you can operate in the now and you don't have a problem now and it will be dealt with uh, the issue will be dealt with in the future so that you don't have to have anxiety around the future in that sense those are two very hard lessons i had to learn absolutely how is one way that you learned that second lesson of being overwhelmed what are some things that you did um I have an amazing mentor, so I found uh, a mentor, um, or actually through the course of my entrepreneurial life, I've had numerous. Right. Um, it helps to lead with vulnerability when you speak with other entrepreneurs, because in they will give you the gift of of sharing back, um, which will allow you to obviously grow and, and learn from them. I'm also part of Entrepreneurs Organization, an amazing, powerful group, 14,000 entrepreneurs around the world. And um, there again, we share in, in, in organized groups. So it's something we call forum. Um, it's between five and eight people and you meet once a month and you check in on a very specific kind of format. It's very structured. Everybody gets the same airtime um, and you go quite deep and that really helps. It's a peer-to-peer -peer learning kind of format. Mm -hmm. So when you ask what helps is it helps to learn from experience from other entrepreneurs. I think that's how you leapfrog. Um, your own development and it obviously you know <laughs> if you can if you can skip the the odd failure through that that's great i couldn't agree with you more one of the many missions of this show is to do just that have other entrepreneurs learning from entrepreneurs learning through our successes and our failures because it comes up a lot that there's no blueprint for being an entrepreneur you kind of have to just go with the flow see what happens and fix it up <laughs> yeah 100 percent 
What would you say uh, here now, Philip, as we move forward? A lot of learning lessons. We're talking about learning from other entrepreneurs. What is one of your greatest lessons learned or failures? And what did it teach you? Why is it stuck with you all the way until today? I think as I got older um, and as I learn more, learn more from other people and learn more from my own life journey, I realized that not everything is as um, serious as sometimes you want to make it out to be. And sadly, a lot of us only learn this once you really hit rock bottom or you hit, uh, you encounter difficult situations. So in my particular instance, this was when I had twins and triplets in uh, within only 13 months. And then suddenly, you know, and before that, we lost a pregnancy that didn't work. So it was quite stressful. And then you learn that, you know, the little dramas are not really so important. And you start to understand um, how to put things into perspective. And I think on an overall, on a larger scale, it's very important or a larger picture kind of thing. It's very important to... Yeah, sometimes be able or acquire the knowledge to where you have to step back and look at things and reassess and let it go where you need to let it go. There's no point in, in carrying the past with you because the past is the past. And if you can control or take control of the present, but create options for the future, that's, a, and I'm not saying I can do that. It's just an insight that I've, I've and I try to do that, but it's just an insight. So if you can, if you can control um, or take control of the present or at least aim to do so and create options for the future. That's a very powerful thing to do. Absolutely. Would you credit your ability to planning so well for the future through being in uh, the entrepreneurs organization or what 100%. are some, yeah, yeah, if you could share with our listeners, you know, what are some ways that you kind of are doing that? So again, it's the access to the network of, of these international entrepreneurs. And it's quite amazing to tap into that because Every single member in there is an entrepreneur um, with a company at a at certain scale. You need to have a minimum turnover and you need to either be a founder or majority shareholder in the business. And so that's already kind of like a filter for like-minded people. And I find that there's a lot of, you know, the, the majority of people there are doers, man. And they can, they, they understand um, the same, they have the same issues or they've gone through the same issues that you are going through or will go through. So there's an abundance of learning there. Um, and you mentioned my podcast, for instance, earlier, you know, for that, I've been able to source amazing, amazing dads, a lot of them entrepreneurs, entrepreneur dads, but they're family men first. And I think that kind of speaks to the, um, to the priorities again. You know, a different way to put it would maybe be um, one of the big learnings that you asked for would be this individual success. Um, one of my dads on the podcast told me this. Uh, that, uh, individual success is worthless um, if it doesn't come with family success at the same time. And I learned that from a lot of those entrepreneurs as well. So it's not really just around entrepreneurship. It's a lot around also personal development and learning from other humans who are on the same path of entrepreneurship. I would put it that way. I think that's an amazing piece of advice that you're giving anybody. You know, you need a solid support group of some form and you have found it with that organization. But if you could choose to have a conversation here, Philip, and learn from any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who are we going with? <laughs> that's a good question. There's so many. I would love to speak to uh, Yvonne Cunyard. He's the founder of Patagonia. And I'd love to have him on, on the podcast dedicated com and ask him what his entrepreneurial journey was uh, in conjunction or, you know, with, with him being a dad, because what he says in his book, uh, let my people go surfing on his first book, he actually never wanted, or he says he actually never wanted to be an entrepreneur yet. He's such an amazing one. And I think a large um, portion of his success comes from the fact that he was able to let it go and to put people in place that would do or would thrive in the, uh, with the tasks and the roles and the things he didn't want to do or wasn't good at and letting go of kind of the things you're not good at and, and putting someone else in. And that's also part of, you know, overcoming ego is very powerful. So I would love to speak to him and, and hear what his story is as an entrepreneur and as a dad. Now, where would this meeting be? <laughs> in, in an ideal Either world. Either on Zoom, 
And yeah, then, or we meet in Patagonia and we go for, for a hike uh, for a week. If he yeah. has time, I doubt it. But Or we can maybe go for a surf. <laughs> it, it could be a good Yvonne, if you're look. listening, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> well, you can definitely tag him away once we publish this episode. You never know. But let's look into the future here, Philip. Not just for that meeting, which is going to happen with him, but one year and five years for these entrepreneurial endeavors you're working on. Let's do one year first here. Where do you see yourself in all of your entrepreneurial endeavors one year from today? Describe that for our audience. Mm, there's, there's two things that I'd like to that I'd like to think I would, would like to achieve in that period. And that's not in the agency. The agency is, is solid and we're going quite strong and we have good clients and we have happy clients and good service and that's good. I would like to make a pivot towards a more meaningful uh, journey in my entrepreneurship where I actually make an impact on society through my work. And so I'd like to become more of an, a social entrepreneur. And there, there's two areas here. We recently started a initiative called togetherforcapetown.com um, where we're aiming to provide 3 million meals for underprivileged kids in the township before the year is out. And we're doing so because economy is obviously collapsed in South Africa with a hard lockdown. We're in one of the hardest lockdowns in the world. You, you're not allowed out um, except for exercise between 6 and 9 in the morning. And you're not allowed to go to work unless your business is, um, is of a crucial categorization of crucial business. Okay. And so that's brought a lot of unemployment and hunger. So oh, yeah. with uh, togetherforcapetown.com, we're hoping to um, kind of funnel and channel energies and money and 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 yeah from organizations and people and companies around the world who love cape town because it's a beautiful place and we'd like it to be that way so that's the one thing i'd like to achieve in the next six months three million meals with with this group of amazing people and entrepreneurs helping already we started last week with twenty thousand meals so that was quite amazing wow congratulations that's a yeah. great service you're doing to <laughs> everybody you. that's great yeah, well, it's it's really required. You know, kids are hungry. That's not a joke. Like it's it's really really serious. Yeah. And um, the second thing I'd like to achieve is uh, dedicated com is now a podcast, but I would like it. And you 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 touched on the mission earlier. So the mission is to empower dads mm -hmm. um, with an aim to facilitate family success by means of obviously sharing stories um, from other dads and sharing ex experience. And um, my vision with this is to make the world a better place. And I believe it's, it's, this is true and very possible because if we can impact that, we are impacting families. And if, if you know, that has a direct impact on society. So in that sense, we can make the world a better place. I have no illusion that making a little intro and a little um, you know, one-hour conversation is not the most powerful tool in the world, but it is a tool to um, create a kind of awareness and create a brand. So what I'd like to do in the near future is um, continue this journey of storytelling in a visual kind of format. And this can be a web series or it can be on Netflix, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but once there is a brand, there will be more reach. And then on the back of that brand, uh, once people know dedicated com as this kind of concept of empowering dads, I would like to create a uh, venture capital fund or some sort of investment fund um, also under the brand dedicated com that has a mandate of investing in companies that carry the same mission of empowering dads. Because I find through entrepreneurship and through business, we can have the biggest impact. And how awesome would it be if we can empower companies that would like to empower dads and obviously with this moms, you know, it's not a competition, but I just happen to speak to dads yeah, yeah. in order to empower families and facilitate family success. So that's what I'd like to achieve, maybe not in the next year, but in the next two or five. Well, it's definitely very ambitious. And I think a lot of people are going to follow you on. How many countries have you featured on your podcast? How many dads? Uh, I mean, oh, rather. Yeah. I don't know. America. So obviously United States, Germany, Spain, Ireland, uh, South Africa, Thailand, Hong Kong. Um, just going off the top of my head here. Yeah, it's amazing. Very, very interesting fathers, really. Yeah. That's amazing. So everybody listening on. You heard that information and we'll go back to it in a second so you can reach out to him. But Philip, thank you so much for coming on today. I know our listeners are going to see all the value in your episode. I loved your greatest failure story. I'm going to take away that quote and I'm going to play it as we promote this show. And I also loved your ambition for the future. You have a brand here that's been in multiple countries. It's steady. And now you want to do something that makes an impact 
I'm very fond of that because part of my mission statement, obviously, is giving back as much as I can to traumatic brain injury patients and making a difference to people who need some help getting through that adversity. But it's time for the last word. Would you mind sharing something that we didn't get to touch on yet today with our listeners? Mm. Thank you. And thank you for doing what you're doing. I think it's a very valuable course and I applaud you. you for it. And I hope you're continuing on your journey and that um, you not won't be disheartened and you'll actually go and grind away at it. I appreciate that. And kind something of words. that we haven't touched maybe that I I find we shouldn't forget is that as entrepreneurs we often um forget ourselves so it's easy to kind of kind of dive into the work and there's two important aspects here that I that I would like to touch on and that is I think you need to be very aware of the fact that you require self-care as an entrepreneur also you need to be you need to make sure that you're fit and that you're strong and that you're healthy and so that means that you need to exercise you need to eat and that you need to sleep at least eight hours um, a day and that gives you the energy and strength to be the leader that you require to be and the second thing is that um, entrepreneurship or bus having a business can be very overpowering and it's important that in the homes we are not entrepreneurs in the homes we are dads um, or moms and your only job in the house is being a dad in, if you're a dad and being a mom if you're a mom and it's very important important to separate those two topics because uh, you is. can't get the time back of of your kids growing up and that sounds like a cliche but it's very true and i've spoken to a lot of fathers and it's very very true i definitely can see your point of view there and understand would you mind please going back here sharing your professional social media website the project you were talking about feeding the kids your podcast anything for our listeners to follow your endeavors here philip I would love to. Thank you. So the project uh, Together for Cape Town, where we're aiming to uh, raise enough money for 3 million meals before the year is out for kids in the township or underprivileged kids in Cape Town, uh, you can find under togetherforcapetown.com or at instagram.com slash togetherforcapetown. And please get involved. If you run a company and you love Cape Town or you've been here or you do business with South Africa, hit me up you know we'll we'll include you and if you know if you are a charity in in one of the countries listening also you know we created this umbrella so that other people and companies and organizations can fit under this umbrella and it's a participative kind of uh, mission mm -hmm. um, my podcast you can find obviously under dedicated.com and i'm also on linkedin uh, under philip hartman and then the number two um, but you can also find me on dedicated.com that's easy mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to touch base with you guys. I'm sure you'll have some people trying to connect with you, Philip, after this great episode. So be sure to check out all of his social media podcasts and website to stay in touch with them. And it's social media time for the show on whatever platform you use. We're at what it's really like to be an entrepreneur on LinkedIn, your favorite morning podcast on Instagram and Facebook, and at Podcast by Lancey on Twitter, so you get updates from both of my shows. Of course, my handles are at Vincent A. Lancy for all social media and YouTube, and my website is vincentalancy.com. If you check out my books, DM me. I want to hear from you. We have Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, and How to Transform Your Mindset When the Norm Has Changed, both on Amazon. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. As always, I will end the show with a quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. This one is from Carlos Slim, the serial entrepreneur from today's spotlight story I started the show with. He said, competition makes you better. Always, always makes you better, even if the competitor wins. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of What It's Really Like to Be an Entrepreneur.